Hey guys, welcome to another JavaScript challenge where we're going to be testing for repeating numbers. So let's imagine a scenario where we have the function and then we're passing in the array into the function. And then we need to test if the number was repeated most times, we are going to return that number. If two numbers were repeated the same, we do need to return the first number that occurred in the array. And last but not least, if none of them were repeated, just return negative one. So let's say if we have an array with fives being repeated twice, but also we have number two repeated two times, then we'll be returning the five because obviously within the array, it has less of an index than we have here for number two. Also, if we have three tens and only two fives, we are going to return 10. And last but not least, if we just have random numbers and none of them were repeated, we will return negative one. As always, if you want to pause the video and solve the challenge yourself, go ahead and do that and resume when you are ready to look at my solution. So I chose to use the array reduce. And the way this is going to work, first and foremost, I will going to create a variable. So I'm going to say let uh, temp numbers will be equal to array reduce and then obviously I have accumulator current and index but before we do anything why don't we return the temp numbers because we will going to do quite a bit of console logging here and like I said the accumulator here within the reduce will essentially just signal that we are talking about whatever we're returning then current will be current iteration and last but not least I also will use the index in this challenge now, in this case, I do need to decide what I'm returning. And I did decided that I will going to work with an object. So at the end of the day, once I'm done with reduce, I will going to have the object. As always, every time we're going to be working with reduce, we need to make sure that we are returning the accumulator. Otherwise, your logic will not going to make sense. Well, first and foremost, if I have an object, I could technically count them by just assigning properties on that object, correct? So I have the object. And I can just say, okay, so for each and every iteration, if the property will be there, then add plus one. And if the property is not there, then we're just going to create one. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to say accumulator current. So the property on the object plus one, that is obviously the case if the already property is there. If not, so we can do or we will just going to assign it to one. Now, what we do have in return is each and every number counted of how many occurrences happen there. Now, the problem here is that this wouldn't keep the indexes correct, because if I'm looking at it, I have five, six, ten. But actually, I do need to keep track of which one occurred first. So what we would need to do right now is do a little bit different setup where I'm going to use a ternary operator. I'm going to say, OK, so. If the property is already on the object, I would want to do one thing. And if it's not on the object, then I'm going to do something else. So let's start with the one that if the property is not on the object. Well, if the property is not on the object, we're going to create a new object. And then within that object, there will going to be amount property as well as the index. Now I'm using right away the ES6 syntax where I don't need to assign it like this. Basically, this is just a shorthand, but in general, this is what that means that there will going to be property by the value of that index. Okay, that is the situation if that particular property is not on the object. Now, what are we doing if that particular property is on the object? Well, again, we will going to have the object, but in this case, I'm going to use the spread operator to get all the properties that were already in there. And the way this is going to work, let me save that just to show you what's happening. So you see that I have the value for number one, for number two, for number five. And for all of them at the moment, I'm just getting back this amount with one. And then this would be the original index. So for number five, this would be obviously zero. Then for number two, this will be one. And then obviously for number one here, the index will be three. And as you can see, index is not repeating. And this is exactly what I'm looking for, because I want to get that original index. Now, as I'm spreading these properties here, I would want to update the amount, but I don't want to touch the index. 
So the first iteration that I'm going to get the index, I will going to keep the index. But for each and every other iteration, I would want to add that amount because that's obviously how we're going to be counting that. So since we're using the spread, the only thing I need to do is just add the property that I would want to change, which in my case will be amount. So I'm going to write amount and that amount will be equal to object, then the property that I have. And obviously within that property, I still, since that property is an object, I have another one by the name of amount. So in this case, I'm using the square brackets, but understand that you can still do it with dot notation, which by the way, we're going to do later on anyway. So I can just say plus one and voila, what do you see right now? Well, I see that I have number one, that would be the value. And then the amount is one, but it right away tells me the index. So let's say for five, I do get my amount by the two and I still keep my original index. So the first occurrence of that particular number. Okay, so far, so good. Now what we can do next? Well, technically, there's multiple ways as always how we can do that. I could set up some kind of for in loop because obviously what I'm getting back is object or I can just test it right away here within my reduce. And the way I decided to do it is simply like this. So let's say there will going to be a variable by the name of max that will represent the repetitions. And obviously, if none of the repetitions will be bigger than one, then I'm just going to return the value by the negative one. Then also I'm going to set up position. Position will be equal to zero. And what position is going to refer to is the actual index. So if one number we're going to have a lesser index than the other one, then we're going to be returning the number with lesser index. And last but not least, we have the value, which will be negative one. And instead of returning temp numbers, we will in fact return the value like so. And why don't we set up the logic? And since I'm going to be using the if statements and I don't want them to be quite long, I will going to reassign the values right now to variables. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a shorter variable by the name of amount, and this will be assigned to the amount property that I have within the, let's say one or two or five. So that's will be number one. Now the second one, I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to have the index and that index will also going to be assigned for that property. And again, the only reason why I'm doing that is just because there's going to be if statements and I don't want them to be long. And the way we're going to do that, we're going to say, all right, so if the amount on that particular property is bigger that we have in the max, so we're just checking if it's at least repeating one time, because otherwise, if none of them are repeating, I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? So we're just returning the negative one. Then I would want to obviously change these values. Then if the amount will be bigger than the max, then max will be our current amount. So whatever we're getting from that current iteration, then what else we can have? Well, we can have the value. Of course, we can assign the value from negative one to the actual number that we have, whether that's two, one or five. So we're going to say that this will be equal to a current. That will be our iteration. And last but not least, I also want to check the position. Because checking if the amount is bigger than max is only one thing. We also obviously want to check whether number was repeated exactly the same amount of times and then check for the index. So whether the index was less and the way I'm going to do it here, I'm going to say, all right, so position will be, of course, equal to this place. And you know what, by the way, I made here a typo. This shouldn't be index. This should be a place because I already have the index here by the name of that. So let's save that. And in this case, what do you see? Well, I see that 10 is working really well. So I have it returned from my second function. But here's the issue. I'm returning number two because it was the first one that was bigger than the max. And obviously, even though five was repeated same amount of times, we're not checking it here. I'm just checking whether this is bigger than max. So why don't we set up another if statement? So in this if statement, I'm going to say, okay, if the amount is equal to max as well as if that is the case, I want to check the place. So whatever the place I have 
within my obviously iteration is actually less than position. So the position that we're setting here, so we're setting the position of whatever the place was in the value. And now I'm just checking whether this is less. And if this is the case, again, we're going to do the same three things. So let's get those and we're just going to reassign them. Now there's going to be one more issue. And the issue right now is very simple. And in fact, there's multiple issues. First and foremost, there's the fact that I didn't copy the max property, of course, here. So I would need to say max. The second one is that we are returning three because the issue is that the amount is equal to the max as well as the position is obviously zero. So that way it complies with this condition. Now we could fix this very easily like so where we have the end operator. And I could say that amount does need to be bigger than one. And also we are repeating ourselves at this point because now we did solve the solution because I do have five, I do have 10. And at the end, I'm just returning negative one because none of them are repeating. But there is no point for me to actually copy and paste it here. So what I could do is here is cut it out from my second if statement, delete the if statement. And what we could do here is just use the or statement in our original if condition. Now, let me copy and paste that. I'm going to set some curly braces around my second one, like so. And the moment we save it, nothing changes. So in this case, we are again using the or statement where the first truthy will be actually rendered. So what's happening here, if the amount will be bigger than max. All right, so we're going to do one thing. But also, if this is not going to be the case, we will going to check whether the amount is equal to max. Then in that case, we also need to make sure that place will be less than position. And last but not least, the amount will be bigger than one. And boom, this is how we solve this challenge.